your Bible with me because when we talk about rudiment, we need to check very quickly from the first book so that we can check all the beginning. I think all the beginning is from the beginning. So we have to check marriage too from the beginning. All right. Let's see the rudiment of a blissful marriage. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 8 through to 17. Very long scripture. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 8 through to 17. Please, I want you to pay attention because from there I will draw out six basic principles for both singles and for both married so that you can enjoy. In second service, I will press a little bit on the same topic but in different dimension. All right, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good, and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Verse 10. The Bible says, now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there it parted and became four river heads. All right. The name of the force is Pishon. It is the one which scared the whole land of Avila. Where there is what? Gold. All right. And the gold of that land is is good. Delium and the up onyx stone are dear. The name of the second river is Gion. It is the one which goes around the old land of Cush. The name of the third river is Edical. It is, it is the one which goes towards the east of Assyria. The fourth river is the Ephraim. All right. The Bible says in verse 15, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tender and to, and to keep it. All right. And the Lord God commanded, verse 15, the man saying of every tree of the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that thou, thou in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Oh, may the Lord bless the reading of his word in our heart in Jesus' name. Marriage is honorable. Marriage is a great thing. Marriage is one of the things that every correct woman being aspire to have. Marriage is good and it is so great that on the day of the wedding, everyone rejoices, including people that does not like you. Everyone rejoices. At that moment, they will come around, they will rejoice with you, even if it is a pseudo <laughs> joy. You understand me? So marriage is good and everybody, everyone always desire to get married. Everyone. Everyone always desire to get married. But it is not everyone that got married that really enjoy their marriage. It's not everyone that got married that really experience the blessings that is in the in the marriage it is not everyone that got married that actually saw the blessedness of marriage some started the very honeymoon night some began after six months we have seen some that after 30 years of marriage their problem began. And you begin to wonder why is this happening like this? Why is this 
happening this way. Why are these people not having a glorious hope? And you see, when it comes to issues of marriage, it's not about the kind of anko. You know anko? What do we call anko in English? The same attire. <laughs> you know, people put on the same attire, especially if you are newly wedded, you put on the same attire and you are just, you know, but it is not, marriage is beyond the same attire. Marriage is beyond, we eat in the same plate. You can be eating the same plate and your life is not the same. It is a, it is a serious thing about marriage. I have seen, in fact, I have seen in marriage that they are sleeping on the same bed, but they are roommate. And I've seen some people, they separated their room. And one of my daughter call it house, house, housemate. I have now seen some people right now, one is landlord, one is tenant. <laughs> In the same, please, are you following me? So you, you understand that the issues of marriage, having a great home, is not just about, oh, this paparazzi. It's not just about we are staying in the same house. It's not just about we are staying in the same room. It's not just about, have you seen people that they are staying in the same room and they never talk to themselves? For months. Because of a shikmini misunderstanding. Minute. That they should just undo and let go. But see, brothers and sisters here, singles and married here, if you must enjoy your marriage, and your marriage will be heavens on heart, then there are six major principles in the scripture we read that you must imbibe, you must bring into your life. Six major principles that you must learn. Six major principles that... You must always renew and fertilize over your life, over your home on daily basis. If you want to continue to enjoy and experience a great home. Oh God. Let me quickly rush through it because of our time. Look at what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. Very serious scripture. Let's, let's, let's start our journey from there. The Bible says, the Lord God planted a garden eastward in what? Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, the first understanding you must have, hello, if your own will be a blessing or your own will be great, if your marriage will become what God really wants your marriage to be, you must understand the etymology of Eden. You must, you must understand the meaning and the root cause of Eden. And actually, when God, when God made Eden, he actually called Eden my presence. So a marriage that will be successful, you must continue to be kept. Look at that scripture. The Bible says, and the man that he formed was what? Was put where? In his presence. Please, are you following me? He was put where? In his presence. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. There are two dimensions that you must understand as you walk with God. There is the one, there is the presence that you will chase by yourself. You are the one chasing to cultivate that presence. But there is the one that he himself will draw you inside. Before you get to the dimension of he himself drawing you inside, you must be the one that first initiate chasing. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? Please, are you here? A home that will be great. The wife must be a chaser. The husband must be a chaser. That is why singles never ever settle for a guy that is not, that is not chasing his presence. Because it's an accident that is about to what? To Please, are you here with me? Hello? He, the guy may be fine. The guy may be handsome. 
The sister may be, what is it now? Beautiful. But the day you finish marrying, it can become a magnetizer. They can really become what will make you a new entity in life. So please, you must understand that the first principle is divine presence. Continuous or continual experiencing divine presence wherever you find yourself. The husband is enjoining God. The, the wife is enjoying God. Before you know it, if there is misunderstanding, you will set it on your knee. But you see this dimension that the wife is far from his presence and the husband is close to his presence. It will always frustrate one. So the first understanding we saw in that scripture is that the Bible says he put the man he formed. We are. Now, now, hello, hello. Now, now, you know at this point, please, are you following me? The Adam, the word Adam there is not male or female. It's womankind. Do you understand the basis? So, when he put the man, when he put the Adam, he was putting both the man and the woman. We are. Please listen. There is a problem. If you are in his presence and the other person is far from his presence. That home will not be correct. You see, you will always pray. One party will always pray. One party will always do nonsense. That is why both the husband and the wife must be kept where you see, all oh, this day of wedding, this let's do wedding, let's do wedding, and we are fixing time for you, and you are jumping. And some people did not come to church again because they are preparing for wedding. When it is one month to their wedding, you will find you will not see them again. What are you doing? Wedding. Everywhere. Wedding. I, but your wedding is one, one month. I said, ah. I have to go to market, sleep in market, wake up in market everywhere. In market. Sorry. I have seen when you miss his divine presence, you do one event. And we have people that will help you plan that one day. We have them all around. Some of them are even in this job. <laughs> they will help you plan one day. But they don't always remember to help you plan the whole marriage life. That is why you must cultivate consistently the hidden principle. The divine in your, in your home. Oh, may God give you understanding. Please, is somebody getting me here? And I've seen that there is no one that cultivate this dimension of God's presence in their life that never excel. You will see them excel. I have seen it. The Bible says, Jacob was with Laban. The presence of God was with him. And, excuse me, who knew? Laban knew that, excuse me, if not because of this guy in my life. The same thing in Potiphar's house. Don't marry a man that is voice of his presence. Everything you gather in his presence, they will squander it. They will what? For you that you are married, congratulations. You can rebaptize. The Bible says, and they put, and he put who? The man inside Eden. You can rebaptize your wife inside Eden. You can rebaptize your husband inside where? Eden. So, every marriage, the very primary rudiment for a blissful marriage, it is hidden. Please, are you following me? It is what? Eden. Yes, can you help me tell somebody it is Eden? Oh, you are not talking. Shout, it is Eden. Shout, 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 it is Eden. Maybe your first name, your firstborn name will be Eden. Those of you that you are still trusting God, that you will get married and give birth. So just call them Eden. It is his. 
So when the man want to misbehave, just carry the ball. Either. <laughs> Return to where? Oh, you didn't answer me here. Return to where? And I love the way the Bible puts it. The Bible says, he puts. He puts. And do you know, the presence of God becomes heavy inside of us. He puts it first and foremost inside us. In dwelling spirit. Then he puts it upon us. Do you understand me? So it is a dimension from the Old Testament to the end of Revelation. That the grace, the presence of God is always imputed. Excuse me, marriage is good, marriage is great, marriage is wonderful, marriage is sweet. But you can continue to pray every day if you, if you marry wrong. Especially you marry a man that did not fear God. Can I say something to you? That your father is a pastor does not mean you carry God's presence. So in this dimension, we don't rejoice by the glory of our father. We cultivate our our home by our his presence. His presence. Let me pray for somebody saying amen. There will be restoration of his presence. Amen. Oh, say amen. There will be restoration of his presence. Amen. You know, sometimes when you walk in this divine presence I'm talking about, sometimes marriage life sometimes want to become frustration sometimes. You want to just be tired. But as you are getting tired and you enter into his presence, he will give you an encouraging word. You just say, oh, daughter, oh, son, you have come back to the all source of joy. This is it. Do it this way, do it this way, do it this way. And, but because you are far from his presence, everything is far from you. Encouragement, help, things that we have, they are completely what? Can I beg you in this church? Don't allow anything to take God's presence from you. It is, the, it is what we help you as you journey in life. Is somebody here with you? Can I proceed? You didn't answer me. Can I proceed? What is the first principle for the rudiment? Divine is presence. His presence. His presence. So when, when the presence of God comes, his goodness is inevitable. Do you hear what I said? His goodness is what? It's inevitable. His goodness is running now. He's running now. Time. Every time, me, as long as you are imputed there, his goodness runs after you. May God give you understanding. Now, look at the second principle. Very great principle. Look at it. Verse 9. Look at verse 9. Very serious scripture. The Bible says, and out of the grant, Please, are you following Bible? Oh, you are not following me. Are you following Bible? Now, let, let's look at verse 9. The Bible says, And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the what? Knowledge of good and evil. Do you know the second dimension of rudiment? In marriage, divine choice. There was a tree planted in the garden, but the garden, in that garden, the tree has both the good of knowledge, the good, the, 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 the tree of knowledge of what? Good and evil. In other words, God made you the Adam. So don't forget where we are coming from. We are not saying a separate man. The Adam, both the man and the woman, the mankind. It was in the later verse, verse 18, that the separation began. Do you understand me? So this instruction was the original man. So as I say, as I say man, Adam, I'm talking to both male and woman and female. So he gave you choice opportunity to make decisions of what will make your home great or what will make your home destroyed. In Christendom, we pray about everything. Hello? 
You didn't answer me. In fact, I have seen now that some people are praying for all things to be done for them. They don't want to do anything. No, 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 no. No. There is a choice that you have been given. And if you want your marriage to be great, you must make choice. For the singles, choice of who you agree to. Because marriage is not spiritual harassment. It's mutual agreement. Are you here with me? Is it, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is sincere true. That somebody just appear and say, Raga, in a, in a motion, he, ke, ke, ke. After two words, five speaking in tongue, and say he's the one. It may not be the one. He may be speaking in tongue and he lack character. Hey, Dan Lo. I have seen them. There are many speaking in tongue. In fact, when they are praying, Haya, Haya, ah, ah, all manner of tongue is in their mouth. The one that angel is not even speaking. <laughs> They will just be saying, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am climbing, I am climbing. What are you climbing? <laughs> but you lack character. And see, seriously speaking, in this Christendom, are you hearing me? In this Christendom, it is not only spiritual. Co- in fact, in marriage, sometimes you will forget you are spiritual. Eh? When you are entering from a rigorous world, and your wife just become moody. <laughs> what now? You have forgotten that you are a spiritual man. Ah! After you have said two or three things, you want to remember. Ah! Oh, pastor. I say, you know, let me move me. Please, is somebody here with me? You are marrying hundred percent spiritual man and hundred percent physical man. So you must understand that you have power to make. You have power to stay. You have power to change things. You have power to make a great choice. Brothers and sisters that are single, I'm telling you, somebody is playing. Somebody is playing drums here. Don't let me use keyboard. Does not make that person bad doom. Hey. <laughs> May God give you understanding. Oh. No, you walk bad on him, don't worry. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Please, is somebody following what I'm teaching? You have right to make choice. God gave you divine choice. You say, I am coming. Many marriage. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. And I want you to listen very carefully. Listen. Very. Many people are convinced that this is the will of God for their life. But after three months that they start relationship, they discover that things is not working. There is one dimension you we have always taught you and we are not always teach, uh, teach you this other dimension. We only told you if you are convinced that is the final. No, that's not the complete truth. Are you here with me? You need conviction from God over that product. Then you also need agreement. Can two work together? They said they what? They agree. So you don't start on one leg. Hello, why are you looking at me like this? As if I'm teaching you another thing. You don't start on what? On one leg. You start on so that you can't, you will not crash. Unfortunately, the moment you are married, you continue. On one. You see, many people, that one leg is already becoming. So they were crying. The moment the leg falls like this, they are out of that marriage. And you will think they are not born again. It was because from the onset, they have misunderstood the workings of the spirit that it is also by conviction and by agreement. Please, are you understanding me? So I, I am convinced about you 
When we start discussing, when we start working our marriage out, we find alignment. We find agreement. So, one will not be talking about Sokoto and somebody is talking about Meduguri. You now talk about that for six months and nothing is happening. And you say, eh, since God has said, we will. Please, do you understand me? So, you must consider the scripture. The scripture is holistic. And the level of what you know is what helps you. Do you understand what I'm saying? You must consider. That is why you have choice. Sir, in marriage, you have choice to be angry. You have choice to be quiet. So, in that scripture, God presented an opportunity for you to take both good and what? You have opportunity. Don't forget, your choice will, will, uh, will rule your life. Whatever you make now, the choice you make now, determine where you are going. Determine what befall you. Determine what will become your choice. So, the second principle, divine presence. The second principle, divine choice. Number three, very serious thing. Very serious thing. There are things I wrote here I did not talk about. Number three, look at verse 10 to 14. Very serious scripture. I'm not going to read the 10 to 14, but I'm going to read 10. Look at that scripture. The Bible says, Now, a what? Can you read it loud? Read it loud. And from there, it parted and became. Now, when you read it down, they will now tell you the four, what the four were doing. Are you, getting, are you getting what I'm saying? The third principle in the rudiment of uh, marriage is divine resources. Divine what? Divine resources. You will notice that it is this man. It is God that was doing all this thing for them. Hello? I beg you by mercy, God in marriage has made provision for your resources. That is why I keep telling people, especially some singles that they are of age and they never get married. They are, they are of age. They have who they want to marry. They have the guy. They have, but they are never married. They said there is no money. Nobody chase money and find it. We move by. We move by understanding that God has given us divine what resources. Go and ask people that are married by faith. They never suffer. Even unbeliever, unbeliever that did not marry by faith, they just see somebody and they kimale and they marry. Go and ask. They are not suffering. But if, even they are, if they are suffering, they will not tell you. But. <laughs> Praise God. For you that you understand this dimension of God for your life, you know that from inception, God made provision for marriage from inception. Please, are you following me? He made what? Provision. Divine resources. For one source divided into four. Ha! Ah, me, one source. 28. That's what I'm trusting God for. One source, God. Well, every other thing is flowing. Money. Who? Oh. I tell you, sincerely speaking, when you walk with God, you understand His divine principle, you cannot be stranded. In marriage, God has provided divine what? Resources. The problem we have is that you have never identified it. The problem we have is that you never maximize it. The problem we have is that you never utilize it. And these are opportunities for you. God made provision for your resources. Lift up your right hand and say amen. Madam, say amen. You will never be stranded. Amen. Say amen. You will never be stranded. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, 
when you understand that there is divine provision and divine resources for you in your marriage, your primary responsibility is to identify it, maximize it, utilize it, and multiply it. That is the way we write. You what? You multiply it. You multiply it. I want to encourage somebody here that all you need to make that marriage successful is right there for you. All you need to make that relationship great, to make that marriage great, is where? Is right with you. What you need to do is to do what? Engage it. Utilize it. Look for it. Identify it. There is no marriage without blessing. Do you understand me? There is no marriage without blessing except the one you did not do the right thing. There is no marriage without blessing. May God give you understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Divine resources. You won't lack everything you need for your home. Say amen, say amen. You won't lack it. Say amen, say amen. You won't lack it. Say amen, you won't lack it. In the mighty name of Jesus. I've never seen a responsible man that God disappointed. Even if the wife has not gotten a job, there is a resources that will meet their daily need. You may not have in bulk, but you will not suffer. Especially if you now know how to, how to manage things. So please, all this, I'm looking for money before you move on in life. It will not work. If some of us are looking for money before we move on, we will never be where we are. We will continue to look for it. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Can I tell you a secret? If it is a wedding day, people will rally around. People will rally around. They will rally around. And you see, the problem I also have with you is that since when you are 18, you have been having dream wedding. It's your problem. That dream wedding is your problem. Dream wedding is your problem. Marry, don't, don't be angry. Let me talk to the singles a little. It is the, the one dream wedding where they will go and read the best rainy all in town. They will go and stay there. And after the wedding, they will be begging for food. If somebody wants to give me 500000 out to rent all, I say, no, there is no need. The church all is okay. You think we don't have all in this church? I will tell you we have all. <laughs> we have all. Very minimal. You will not even pay much. So after, let me tell you, there are two us in this church. The one up there, you will pay money. This one, you don't need to pay. After joining you and you are doing processional him, after you get out, just cut that food in package. People are coming. It's a reception. Just give them. Give them. Give them. Give them. Give them. The remaining money in your pocket. You vamos. Well, before they say on your tongue, <laughs> you have you have gone. Far, 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 far. You, the only resources that will carry you for three years, you spend it on one day. Eh? Kinesio, we call. Wedding dimension in 21st century has changed. <laughs> Don't worry. When I'm saying that, I'm saying that God will raise people that can do everything for you. Uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> See, we have a lot of issues as pastors. We sit down. We, we attend their wedding and everything we do. Na, 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 na. After two weeks, we, they will come before us and sit down. And say, sir, even to eat is a problem. Say, ah, with all this gl glamorous uh, something, ah, please be careful. Excuse me. Drop your dream wedding. You can redo the dream wedding when you are balanced. Ah, I will do, I will do second wedding for you. But with you and your husband, you just come. And to to ragbe ni wemun pe. Abi oga. A to ragbe ni. To ragbe are coming to me. Just 
come and say in the name of God, we will not just use another ring. It's the same ring. <laughs> Bless you and go and sit down. That is then you can now do party. You are taking money out of money. But you now say to me that you are 30 something, 20 something, and there is, so is a code. So what? There is money. Because there is a resources that God has what? Provided for you. Number four. Oh, I have to run off now. That's my problem. Number four. Time is always an issue to me. Look at verse 15. Very serious. Hello, this is very, very serious. Verse 15, I'm not going to say much. I'm, do, I'm just going to talk to you, uh, uh, tell you. Look at verse 15. Then the Lord God do what? Took the man and do what? Put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep. Do you know the fourth principle is divine location? And when I'm talking about divine location, most of you will be talking, you'll be thinking about where to settle. Yes, it's part of it. But it's more than that. It's more than that. Wherever there is your location, that is where your location will meet you. There is always a location for destiny in your place of location. That is why everybody will not travel abroad though, and we will prosper. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know you will not say yes, sir, because all your mind now is abroad. We have seen people in abroad. We are sending money to. That's a bros. Bros. <laughs> we in Nigeria. Nigeria is not that bad though. I'm telling you. If God opened doors for you and God tell you to go. Some of you are going without the word of God. That is why you get there. You are now frustrated. They won't come back home. They will rather die there. <laughs> eh? What would they tell? What would they tell their? What they would rather die there. They won't come back. But we are seeing people that are prospering because we have the word of God for them, and they went there. They are prospering. Excuse me. Wherever your location is, your location will come and meet you. It does not now matter where it's coming from. It can come from abroad too. Eh? May you begin to spend dollars as offering. Uh, we will gladly receive it in the name of the Lord. <laughs> Very important thing. But see, your divine location is crucial because right location makes you a wonder. In other words, when you locate the right person, you may not have too many things. Are you getting me? But you are doing exploit. People will begin to look at you and say, Nigeria is a le. Because you have rightly located the correct person. You have rightly located the correct person. You have rightly located the correct person. It gives you air. One of the things you must locate, brother, is your purpose. Locate your purpose. Oh, may God give you air. Locate right company. In this marriage, thing, oh, hey, I have seen people that are, they, they located wrong person and their marriage shattered. Good company. You are in a church like our own that you belong to a young couple. Young couple group. You go to your group on the, every third Sunday. You interact. You interact. You will hear some things. And while you are hearing some things, your life and your marriage is getting better. But don't do it all alone. Do it both you and your husband. Because most of the time, it is the woman we are punishing. The woman will come to church. They will come to discipleship. Where is the man? When is he? He goes Sunday. He went what? They should sit down and you deliberate. Because as two of you grows together, something better happen to you. That is why we have many spiritual wife than spiritual husband. They will never settle down here. Even some of them will come to church. They will be receiving call inside, outside, inside. <laughs> Why are you like this man? Kilo Shewa? Talo Tawalofa? The women are doing greatly. The men are in case of 
mundane things. And unfortunately, it always fall back on the woman we are at home. If you have a spiritual husband that comes to church and attend all these things and, and is going, is using it, you are blessed. Oh. You are what? You are blessed. If you have a spiritual wife, because there are some wives that they, they are born to be Jezebel. Anything good, they will be drawing you back. Terrible wife. Sporoculous wife. Let's go to the old man. We say, Let's go to church. He said, church, church. A boss is too late. No one, they are demonic grammar. He's too heavy. Oh, terrible wife. Let me say, locate your company, correct people. Do you hear what I said? Correct people. When you depart yourself from people that can tell that the only thing you do all along when you are together is sober. Run away. They will soon crash your home. They will soon do what? You know you have friends like that. Every time they come, it is another man's life. The table. They never table their own life and their own marriage. And you want to have a blissful home, it can happen. When you come. There are some of you, when issues happen, you don't have right people around you to call. That will cancel you correctly. And that will help you. Well, there are some of you that you will even have, but Ori Kunku Kinwan Pelebo stubborn. You are so stubborn that you have believed that nothing, no matter what anybody says, I have concluded in my heart. Which heart? May God help you. In this kind of teaching, you don't look at anybody, you look at yourself. Okay, my life. Some wife will be using stars. Number five. Number five. Look at that scripture. Verse five. Oh, I have to run up now. Because we have thanksgiving to do. Verse five. Look at verse. No, no. Look at verse. Verse five. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. To do what? I will be stopping there because there is one important thing that and that's that thing that I needed to show you but I, I, I didn't know if I'm going to get there. You see, divine work and assignment. If your marriage will be great, don't marry an idle man. Do you hear what I'm saying? You didn't answer me again. If the wife is working and the husband is not working, it's a problem. Oh. Eh? And you know some, some husband have this gratuity mentality. Ataro, since morning to evening, is at home. He's not going anywhere. He's not doing anything. The wife will go and come. And at the end of the month, he say, I am the head of the house. Submit. You, why are you like this? You have not heard, you have not seen people like that. Are you not doing it? <laughs> you say, do what? Submit. Say submit what? Say, if I am your husband, uh, uh, you lack responsibility. You are irresponsible. Divine, see, God only blesses those that work home. God does not bless. This miracle thing they have said, receive, you, you jump and say, I cash, I receive. You are cashing, oh, furufu. You can't receive anything. God blesses what? Work. Your work. The little you are doing, he pours his blessing on it. All this financial freedom we did, if you are not working, <laughs> nothing will work. Work. Walk. If you need to study, go back to school. Read. Be studious. Walk. Walk to the point that walk. Wake up one day and say, I am tired of, with, of, of walking with you. You are not walking. Then what do we God bless? I will just come here every day. The only thing you like doing is to beg. Everything. I don't have. I don't have. 
I don't have, excuse me, there is work to do. You say, my head is not okay. Which head? Start doing something. There is always something to do. Yes, sir. I was in a mess in the University of Learning. They refused to allow me to go. <laughs> then, so, and I was tired. So I said, I want to go and do, you know, selling drugs or selling provision. I told my fiance, she was my, now my wife. I, told, I said, I want to, he said, ah, you have God's call upon your life. Why will you be, this thing will soon go. I said, let me walk. Let me walk. This is 50 months. You are in Asu strike. You are not working. Even if they did not employ you, submit yourself by fire by force. Employ me without pay. You know that they will give you money one day to go. You are sitting there. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not working. Am I too harsh? No, no, even if you say I'm harsh. I, I, I just want you to understand that God only, it is divine war. He said, He put them not to be joking. Do you know everything was ready there? But He said, He put them there to keep and to do what? Some people want to have a great home, but they don't want to work. Hey, oh, my home is going to be the best in the world. It's a lie without work. It's useless. And the last thing there is divine instructions. So when you read verse 17, you are going to see the divine instruction. Look at the divine. He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall divine instruction on purity you are engaged you are not pure there is consequence please is somebody here with me divine instruction on how to carry out your purpose on earth divine instruction on how to become in, there is always divine instruction and you must consider the manuscript which is the word of god bow down your heart